So Kevin and I, we're gonna take this red oak down right here today. We've got, uh, it's really close, close to the house. Just about six, seven feet, I guess. And we got a three phase line right here. And then there's a single phase that runs down that way. And there's one limb. You can't see it from right here. It's, uh, it's over there. It actually goes out over the power line. What has happened is, and I'll show you all this here in a little bit if I think to remember it. This concrete apron that comes off the asphalt to his carport. This tree, the roots on it, have actually lifted this apron about three inches higher than what his carport concrete is. It does not appear to have affected any of his house foundation, but it has definitely lifted that apron right there. So Kevin's uh, moving stuff around and kind of crunching stuff up. We got some, these first limbs are kind of cankered, what I call cankered type of limbs. They're just all over the place. They trimmed and cut on the power company as over the years to get them out of the power line. And they've got, they've the tree limbs are all over the place. They got whiskers all over. We get these first few out the bottom right here, then we'll be dealing with some different limbs. But we're fixing to start up uh, speed lining some of these things down. I got one right here ready. Once Kevin gets move that stuff down there, we've got the mats out. Those are the gator mats. And then I've got my dica pads or dica pads, whatever they're called. I got them down on the outriggers. And then of course I got the mini sitting on the on pads over there too, which is pretty handy. So we're just gonna, Kevin's gonna wrap the blade there we're not even going to use a Ford wrap we we figured out Gabe and I have that we can like throw stuff on the on the blade wrap it around the blade there and everything and we'll speed line it down so he's going to set up now and get ready we'll see how this first one goes Go around the blade one time and and uh, just hold the tag in the rope. There's all you gotta do. Yeah, I would put it on that side over there. Yeah, I'd put it over there. So this area is kind of in North Columbus. It's called Sherwood Forest. And they is some houses in this place right here. There's probably 200 plus houses in here. Yeah, just put it over it and come under it. And then just pull, just pull it tight right there is all you gotta do. Pull it tight. And then just stand back over there and you can drop it as you come down. Hope the camera got that, so that worked really nice right there. Yep. So that keeps me from having to hold this thing over this roof right here. And also, what you could take, the, I could take the GRCS and put it on here and stand this limb up, winch it and stand it up and cut it all at one time. But then you gotta deal with lowering it right there. So what happens is when you do this, it lands right there flat on the ground and he technically don't have to pick it up. He could hop on the mini right there grab it and throw it in the pile so we'll just pile them and then i'll come through there and we'll set the chipper up so he's got extra bridges for the uh speed line so when i shoot one down he'll clamp it right back to that and uh we'll keep on going
slap over the roof y'all where I'm cutting these limbs and so there's a roof oh beast heck out of lower Mickey I was just telling Kevin beast heck out of lower them with the porter, porter at because they'd end up like right in the middle of the roof and I'd have to go down there and pull them to keep them to make them go off the edge of the roof so we're just gonna go on up so we got a limb there that one I'm facing to go up and get those two and I won't even have to move my anchor once I get up there I'll set the anchor one time get both of them limbs we're going down between the roof and the three-phase power line right there. All right, so I'm at the fort now. I'm fixing to strap it right here. Well, I can strap it up here. I'm actually talking to them on the camera right now. I'll just strap it right there, and we'll get both of these at the same time. So, dude. So, I'm going to put the... Uh, I'll send one down, Kevin, and then uh, and then I'll let you get it situated because we're going to be make sure that you're back tight on the rope again. And we'll, we'll do that. That's what we'll do. <laughs> it don't take much on them. All right, let me suck in and then we can uh, we'll go up to all right, pull it tight. Yeah, I'm good on it right there. Yeah. All right, pull it tight. Yeah. Are you grabbing me? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to pull a sag in it. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Yeah, I know, right? So me and Kevin, just let me show y'all what we got going on here because this is kind of funny. All right, so we're going where well, our angle of attack is like insane right here. It's going dang near straight down. And he was touching that bottom calm line down there, which when the limb drops on, it's going to weight that thing. It's going to, what it's going to do is it's going to sag that line. It's also going to pull on this right here too. So it's going to pull it. So you ain't gonna, you're gonna go right under that line right there. Even if he was touching it, it still wouldn't hit it. Go right under it. So I'm on, I've got her notched. It's gonna go right down beside my basket. And let's see here. Yeah, y'all should be able to see that. All right, so here we go. Yeah, y'all see that? It's at the street out there, y'all. See where the butt is? No wrestling. He just undoes it, and bam, there it is, that quick. So now I'm gonna strap this one and cut that other side in. Let me get the camera turned up right. Yeah, that's right. So I was just telling Kevin down there, it's really important where you end up with the hook on these things where you're going to make your cut in relation to where you're going to make your cut so i'm going to cut it cut this thing right in here so you either want this thing to end up back here somewhere or over here past the cut you don't want it to end up where you're going to make your cut because what will happen is is when that thing drops this butt of this thing will be right here even with this hook and then it'll bind on this rope and it'll basically put the brakes on it and won't let it go down the, won't let it go down so it's uh it's important because you know say if you wasn't in a lift and you were over a house and you were on a rope say you had the limb bind up say 20 foot down the roof you were toast man at that point and he got to figure something out get her notch a little bit 
And then we're going to connect it. And then Kevin will pull it tight. I'm gonna, I gotta move my basket a little bit here. Yeah, I see I got the root directly under my basket. I'm gonna go up soon. I'm fixing to go up. Yeah, I'm trying to put the lift in low speed here. Because once you get boomed all the way out, when you're in high speed, things, uh, it'll make your booty pucker up. <laughs> I know. Kevin just explained to me, which I knew this already, that he does not do heights. He will be ground crew <laughs> from this point forward. So y'all, all right, you ready? All the way to the ground. You hear that thing whistling when it goes down, man. Love it. All right, we're gonna take this one out. Yeah, let's see what looking like right there. All right. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, just watch it there as you're going. I'm going to let y'all watch this as it, it just plays out. See, the three-phase line is right there, and he's against that phone line down there. All right, here we go. Y'all see it pull that line down and then he dropped it too once he got to right there also. Kevin just told me that was too easy. That one is going to be. It didn't hit you, did it? <laughs> All right, good. I seen it when it kicked up when I was like. I'm actually extended out over the power line. You can see it. Let me grab, I just got my gloves on. So power line is right here. Goes there. I got to get this limb right here. And this wind needs to quit really is what it really needs to do quit so i got i've got plenty of clearance right there all right just like that i've got it trimmed back where i'm back on this side of well my basket is centered on the power line but i'm working my way back i just cut them and threw them down i didn't do any filming Sometimes it's, uh, you're better off not to mess with the camera. You get distracted. You end up sticking the boom in the power line or some stupid mess like that. We don't need no barbecue in this, this weekend either.
always like getting them first two or three cuts done and then you're good you know oh my god now the wind is gonna really get up see that's something else you got to keep in mind that wind blows them power lines around too so you got to be mindful of that yeah, that's right have to take a wrap of it or something if it won't roll if it won't slide all right there it's coming in yeah. All right, y'all, we're about down to this, the spar on this thing. I got that one over there and this one right here. This is the last top piece we're going to cut. I've got it notched. If we, we're running the porter out now. Just pull that rope all the way up to me, Kevin. And no, it's fine. I got an, I already got one on it up here. So what we're going to do, Kevin's going to lock it in the porter wrap there. And I'm going to cut it. And I want it to pivot all the way back around and come back into the tree. Because like if I was to cut this thing right here and just free fall it, it would smack the power line over there. All right. All right, I'm ready, Kevin. Put it, uh, put it in the wrap, and put one wrap on it, just like you did the other one there. See, it just missed that power line right there. See, just let it quit swinging and then lower it. See that thing? If you wouldn't have that thing strapped when it launched off of there, it would have smoked that power line. <laughs> yeah. it, would have, it would have knocked out a bunch of houses over here. This there's just roofs everywhere. Alright, take and roll that one out of the way so the next one don't hit it. Yeah, they make a pretty good thud. Don't worry about it. Here we go. We're going to be dropping a bunch of them. <laughs> He's on the ground. I mean, y'all thought that thing was gonna hit that power line up there. I'm in close.
video was filmed uh, last weekend of March, which was the day on the Saturday before Easter this this year. And I had the Hyundai, but I did not have the grapple installed on it yet. It was, we didn't do that for another, well, let's see. I think Russell came here the week. Yeah, the very next week we installed the grapple on this thing. Matter of fact, on the Hyundai that was. So had I had the Hyundai, I would have ran it here. But speed line and the trees, it, it's uh, where you can do it at, it's a lot better than the border wrap because uh, the pieces all land flat and they land where you want them to land. They land away from the stem of the tree. And it just, it makes, see, just like this right here, Kevin is on the speed line and that, this is the whole tree sitting in this pile right here. I mean, minus the big pieces of it. And it just, Kevin just stacks it all and we back the chipper in there and I chip it all. It's all stacked, you know, nice and neat. All the button ends are turned the same way and everything. And the whole, we did the, the entire trees in the dome trailer, the chunks of it everything's in the dump trailer just one load and you see the butt of it on the ground right there how big that thing is that's kevin he's filming a uh tiktok for his uh on tiktok for logger kevin there you can check him out there but you'll uh on these places where you got tight clearance at you're going to end up with a lot of small pieces like these right here remember in tree work if you're you know wanting to get into it or anything always remember small cuts equal small problems big cuts equal big problems and it's a lot easier to recover from a from a small cut on something that it is say something that you whack this you know seven eight hundred pounds or you know ten eight to ten foot or even longer than that piece and you're having to deal with the uh, destruction afterwards so if you're in a tight spot kind of questionable it's way better off to make two cuts than it is to make one cut but I'm a big proponent of it if it fits and shifts, you know what I mean? And if I can get a big chunk to get down where I want it to go, I'm going to try to do my math and do my figuring. And and if I can send a piece that's pretty good size, let her rip, tater chip, we're going to get her on the ground because the less cuts you make, the quicker you get the tree done and get it completely over with.
this is what it looks like.